Hi, I'm Rod Stryker, and today we're going to talk about four essential things that you do or will do to practice really for the rest of your life. And as simple as these four things are, so I'll, I'll list them and then we'll talk about each one and I'm going to give you a, maybe a hint about how to work with them. Um, we really have to take responsibility for the quality of our lives. In fact, as challenging as life can be, it's ultimately uh, our choice about how we're going to encounter it and whether we're going to thrive or just barely survive. Uh, so these four things are basically this. Number one is contentment. You have the ability to access contentment at any point in your life. So instead of waiting for contentment to happen, we're going to talk a little bit about how vital it is that you take the reins and that you, you really grab hold of the tools and techniques that can offer you contentment. Life changes when you're content, and so that needs to be our starting point. It's really important to know that there is a part of us that is content no matter what's happening in the outer world, no, what, no matter what's happening circumstantially. And in fact, I make this distinction between, we'll call it circumstantial contentment and existential contentment. So circumstantial, I think we all get it. If I have more stuff in my life that gives me pleasure, that gives me fulfillment, then if I have more stuff that I like in my life than I don't like, that generally is how most people, um, uh, what, they, what we rely on, whether or not we're going to be happy. What really our happiness depends on, having stuff we like in our life. And to a great extent, that's true. But really, from the most ancient times, human beings found that that wasn't going to suffice. That they, we couldn't depend on the world to always deliver the elements, the circumstances, the friends, the conditions that would make us happy. So what human beings began to do thousands of years ago, and I think in this respect very little has changed, is we begin to invest ourselves in existential contentment, which means that by virtue of who I am, the very essence of who I am is always content. There's a part of you and I that doesn't need anyone or anything to change in order to be content. The fact is, this is the language of our heart. And why we don't feel it more often is an interesting question. And the fact is, because partially our mind is so busy trying to shape circumstantial contentment that that mind, the very mind that's trying to create circumstantial contentment, is the mind that's making our existential contentment more difficult to find. In fact, we only really find that peace through meditation, through prayer, through contemplation. And most specifically, whenever the mind is quiet, you have access to authentic, enduring, permanent, eternal contentment. Don't take it from me. Every spiritual tradition basically said the same thing. Uh, a vital quote in Psalms in the New Testament is, be still and know that I'm God. It's the idea that when the mind is quiet, we really we access a different world. And that world really is the, is the world of contentment, joy, meaning, purpose, inspiration, and ultimately living uh, and fulfilling the very reason we are alive. So that's number one. And, um, what you'll get from me is the strong recommendation. I, I don't even know how to say it more strongly than that. I implore you to make time on a daily basis to step away from trying to work things out circumstantially and remember the nature of who you are. Remember what you feel and look like when your mind is still. The second thing is resolution, even self-control, so resolve. You make resolutions that you become more and more capable of, of uh, fulfilling. And at the, at really at the height of this is understanding that what you think, uh, even if it's not positive or less than constructive, you will actually first give yourself permission to think. Who we are and who we become in life is as much shaped by what we say yes to as what we say no to. In this day and age, we have access to so many distractions, so many well, let me say, so many opportunities, so much information, so much input. There's so much we can gather as it relates to information. But there's so little peace, and there's so little tranquility, and there's so little wisdom. I'm a strong proponent of everyone who's looking for a higher level of happiness and contentment and meaning in their lives. You make good decisions about how you use technology, 
how you use your mind and thoughts. And for the most part, all of us have a, an ability to choose what we think. Now, it may seem like the mind just runs on its own and we don't have those choices, but moment to moment, there is a gap between every thought that we have. And you can actually resolve to not think certain thoughts. It sounds challenging, but I want to present that challenge to you. I want you to, let's just put it this way, for at least one hour a day, give up one stream of thinking, self-criticism. You get to pick the hour, whether that's in the afternoon or in the morning or in the evening, you get no self-criticism. All of the thoughts and feelings that are generated out of self-doubt, second-guessing, regret, all of those kind of dis uh, debilitating kind of thoughts that rise out of our unconscious and they just kind of spin out in our minds and we don't really give them much thought, one hour a day, no self-criticism, no doubt, no regret. And what will start to happen is that hour will be your hour of peace. Even in the midst of action and living in the world, it doesn't require closing your eyes or meditating, that hour will be, become so precious to you in time that you'll go, well, I want two. I want two hours of that or three. And so if you establish one hour, even for the next 10 days, you begin to develop the neural pathways that help you uh, that you require to interrupt the spinning of your thoughts. And this is an incredibly empowering, empowering tool and, and method. Super simple, something you can apply directly. You can start today. And then the third one is inquiry. And that is really understanding that you and I, while we might have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things to do in this world, um, perhaps nothing is more important than really knowing more about who we are. And fundamentally, the more I know about myself, the more freedom and the, uh, I can go out into the world with and the more capability I have. You can be powerful, but if you don't have self-awareness, there's probably no guarantee you're going to be fulfilled either. Ultimately, we want to think about what really am I here to do? You know, what's the purpose of my life? I know maybe it's raising kids or creative life or um, paying your rent or paying your mortgage or whatever the case may be. But what is really vital? What do I want to have um, accomplished in terms of its impact after I'm gone? If I exhaust all of my life on what I'm doing in life, then and, and with no attention to the legacy it's going to leave, chances are we're not really um, operating from the larger picture of what is possible. What is, the deep, what is the deeper meaning and purpose of our life? And I'm going to give you a hint to that. Half of that answer, half of the answer to that question was the deeper meaning and purpose of my life. The purpose of your life is to figure out how to suffer less. That simple, you know, how to suffer less. And so you need, and we all need to do this, we need to ask ourselves these important questions of how do I suffer less? What do I need to do to suffer less? Is it in the way I breathe? Is it my expectations? Is it my beliefs? Is it my relationships? So. That's a question that only you can answer for yourself, and that's a, but it's as vital as anything else you can do in terms of its effect on your happiness. And the other piece of that is in to inquire into the nature of you that's not changing. In a way, I'm looping back to that first category of contentment. Um, be certain, in addition to asking yourself big questions, that you are tapping into the part of you that's always at rest and always at peace. So that's the inquiry piece. And the last piece is about fellowship. And that is really creating a, a cohesive circle environment where you have positive associations and pos uh, positive relationships. Our mind becomes what it associates to. So in other words, if you're with other people who bring out the best in you or who reflect to you what you want to uh, fulfill and become, that's an important recipe, important ingredient in a life of fulfillment. Ultimately, the mind is always um, associating to and becoming whatever it's around. Um, and there's something I'll say about this whole pitch around these four different elements. If you fail at the first three, in other words, you don't take my advice and you don't pursue contentment, uh, resolve, or inquiry. If you fail at those, don't fail at this one. Because this is the one that if you're around the right people, supporting you in the right way, 
you'll actually be led back to the first three. This is the one you don't have permission to fail at because having the right people in your life is not only shown to have uh, significant biological effects in terms of longevity and health and immunity, but having love and, uh, with people who elevate you and bring out your best is key to moving forward in your life in a positive way and possibly coming back and actually doing the work of the first three steps I described. Finally, let's go back to that first step in contentment. Something that you can do that's super simple is to simply close your eyes with me now. Go ahead, close them. And in this contentment piece, we're just going to go for a few moments. I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes and take two breaths, two or three deep breaths, and release all tension in your shoulders, in your face, in your arms, in your, in your torso, in your chest. And then, still with your eyes closed, take a moment to imagine or to sense a smile. Just sense a smile. Don't change your expression. Your mouth doesn't have to move. Sense the feeling behind a smile. Then, sense that smile just a little bit more. Sense it as a key to nurturance and buoyance and happiness. Now sense your physical heart content. Same thing, your heart, your physical heart is smiling. Relax and sense your heart smiling. Now do the same thing in any portion of your body where you have an injury or you have some pain. Sense it smiling. Do your best to relax the old idea of the pain or discomfort and invite this new idea, this healthy, invigorating, enlivening smile. Some of you will begin to sense that the cells respond to that message. Now, sense your whole body smiling. even sense the space around the body smiling, as many of you will feel that when the body is in a place of happiness, contentment, and ease, it's actually the feeling itself is bigger than your form. Now sense the, the whole of the body, the space around it, and the environment in which you are about to move once this practice is over, sense a smile your body, the space around it, and the next place you will go as a space of smiling, of joy, of ease, and freedom. Now when you sense that it's established, just go ahead and deepen your breath and slowly begin to open your eyes. So contentment's never far away. Use that as the foundation and then grow these three other fundamental ideas. And I'm quite certain your life will unfold in beautiful ways. Mm -hmm.